because uh, we're going to talk about something very serious, something actually I-, I would say, I can confidently say that a lot of us struggle with, and that is anxiety. And, and maybe this isn't something you're struggling with now, maybe this is something you struggle with in the past, maybe this is something that, that just comes up at certain times in certain situations, uh, but most of us in some capacity have struggled with anxiety. So I want to share a story with you. So this was about three weeks ago, and I was asked to speak at an event in in central Missouri, and it was at my former college, uh, Central Christian College. And when I went there, it was a middle school lock-in called Crazy Days. And so they had middle school ministries from all over Missouri that were staying in the dorms, and they were having this awesome event for the weekend. And so I came in, and and Justin and I, we ended up staying there. We stayed in a dorm as well. We bunked together, and uh, it was just like uh, college days. But when we went there, uh, I was having to speak three messages. So we drove out. I left Thursday night. I drove uh, from from here to St. Louis, and then I stayed the night with my in-laws, and then I went from St. Louis to Moberly, Missouri, which is about two hours away, and I spoke Friday night. And I spoke twice on Saturday before I headed back this way. And so the first message on Friday night went great, went smooth. The message on Saturday morning went great, went smooth. And then we got into the final message, the final message of the entire event. And here I was, I was sitting, I was kind of, if it was set up like this, I was sitting kind of where you were, Elizabeth and Cheyenne, right? I was right over there, I was sitting with Justin, and I knew, okay, we've played a couple songs, I should probably head back because I'll be speaking soon, no big deal. And so I got up, I walked to the back, and right when I was going to the back, I, I, I saw the director of the entire event, I said, hey man, how many songs do we have left? He said, okay, you have uh, two more songs. And so then I walked back, and I saw an old friend from the college. We were talking for a couple minutes. And then I got back on stage, and it's kind of like these curtains right here. I was sitting and watching the band. I said, okay, I'm good to go, right? Like, I'm good to go. I'm excited. I love speaking. Like, I love being able to preach, to teach. I I think it is awesome. Uh, But right before, right, we're going in this last, last song, Right before I'm about to go up to speak, I realized something. I had to pee. Yes. And if you know me, one of my greatest fears is to pee myself (laughs) when speaking. Yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting real with you. One of my biggest fears, you know, people have their fears of like looking weird or their zippers down. I, I'm like, man, maybe if I have to speak too long, I'm going to have to pee. And so I'm up there, I'm, I'm backstage, and I realize I probably have one more minute before I have to speak. Do I have time to run to the bathroom? And so initially I'm like, you know what, I've spoke a million times. It is only like 30 minutes. I'll be good to go. And so I decide I'm not going to do it. I'll be able to hold it. But then a thought came into my mind. What if you can't hold it? (laughs) What if you do have to go worse than you think? Are you going to leave the stage in the middle of the final message of crazy days to say, hey, can you guys hold on one second? I got to go to the bathroom. Are you willing to take that risk? And so I'm not joking, guys. I'm not just, I'm I'm not throwing this out there to be funny. This is really what was happening in my mind. It was like back and forth. You should go right now. You only have a minute. You shouldn't go. You're going to have to go on stage. There's going to be no one to announce you. And and they're going to be like, hey, where's the speaker? You should go. You can go really fast. You know where the bathroom is. And it was like back and forth in my mind. I wasn't even worried about the message. All I was worried about is, am I going to have to pee, right? And so right before they hit that last note, before I got up to speak, the MC walked backstage, an MC for the event. I looked at him. I said, hey, can you stall? I got to go to the bathroom. And I sprinted off, and, and he's like, uh, okay. You could tell he didn't want to laugh, but he was kind of laughing. And so he's like, sure. And so he ran out there, and I heard him. He's like, so let's review what we've been talking about for the weekend. He was just making it up. And I went to the bathroom, and I came on stage, and I remember speaking, and I was afterwards driving home, and I said, I 
think I almost had an anxiety attack. I legitimately think I almost had an anxiety attack. And so when talking about this message and anxiety, it's something that isn't just unique to certain individuals. I think in all our lives, there are moments that we have extreme anxiety. I remember in that moment starting to sweat. I remember my ears starting to tingle. I remember starting to not think straight. Maybe have you, have you guys been there before where you've been so anxious that you couldn't even think? You were like sweating extremely quick and you couldn't focus on what was ahead. Can I get some head nods? Because I believe this is one of the greatest things, greatest things in our life that, that hinders us from having a closer relationship with God. I've been studying, I've been researching, I've been looking for this message, and the reality is this, we are the most anxious generation. It's true. Us as a generation, I'm throwing myself in there. We are an anxious generation. We get nervous about everything. We get nervous about everything in our lives, and, and some of us, maybe we're not, we're not like that, but there are times that we will be anxious. And so we're going to be talking about this in our series on anxiety, and really with this topic, uh, we want to talk about the source, and we want to talk about the steps of recovery. What is the source of anxiety, and how do we take steps to recover from it? So here's the thing. What is anxiety. When you think about it, what actually is anxiety? Because we've heard numerous things, numerous definitions, people talk about it all the time. What is anxiety? And so I'm going to put up on here, here is the definition that we have for anxiety. Anxiety, according to the American Psychological Association, the APA, defines anxiety as an emotion characterized by feelings of tension, worried thoughts, and physical changes like increased blood pressure. Okay, according to the APA, that is the definition of anxiety. It's an emotional change in us, right? And so when we think about anxiety, it's important to differentiate that there's actually two kinds of anxieties. There's normal anxiety, normal emotions that we have that, that cause anxiety. Then there's actually an anxiety disorder. So those are two separate things. So anxiety is actually a normal emotion that the body has, and then there is something that we call the anxiety disorder. We're going to actually talk about both those, but first we're going to talk about anxiety. Anxiety is a normal thing. It's very normal. Actually, it's a God-given thing. It helps us survive. For example, if a snake jumps out here and is standing right there, a rattlesnake, what I'm going to do, the emotion I'm going to have is going to be an anxious emotion, and it'll actually give me the ability to decide, am I going to fight the snake, or am I going to run from the snake? It's a survival instinct. So in that time, it has this emotion that arises in us. It's called the fight or flight emotion. Have you guys ever been in a situation like that where something extreme happens and then you have to choose, am I going to fight? Am I going to step into this? Or am I going to flight? Am I going to run for it? You're, gonna, you're a runner? Okay. Well, let me share a story. Uh, I was outside getting the mail in my last house up in Kokomo, and across the street, there was this firefighter, and he had this really big dog. Okay? So I go out, I get my mail, and, and I look across the street, and I lock eyes with this dog. This dog's looking right at me, and I knew, okay, something's about to happen. And this dog sp started sprinting across the street towards me. So right in that moment, the dog is sprinting after me, and, and when I noticed him coming, what I first did is I went and I uppercutted the dog, right? And then I roundhouse kicked it, okay? That is my first thing I did. Yeah, you don't believe me? Okay, so what I did was I saw the dog, and actually I'm so blessed you're here. We actually have a picture of the dog. He was huge. If you can go ahead and show it, Bailey, what we have here. Um, yeah, there he is. Okay, so, uh, so the dog was running at me. He was huge, right? And so coming after me, and, and initially I turned and I tried to run away, okay? And so I went to run, and, and I was super embarrassed because the owner came out. He's like, come on, dog. And the dog, like, stopped and walked back, and I was sprinting. I was like, oh, hey. I was just 
getting my lats worked on. Okay, so here's the thing. I chose in that moment to run for my life. According to the APA, that's a response based on anxiety. That's an anxious response. And so if we want to be able to understand anxiety, we have to understand what it is. Have you guys ever gotten in a car accident? Okay. So you guys have gotten car accidents. Maybe some of you have had animals try to attack you, right? Maybe some of you have had, like, someone come up to you and they just want to fight you. Do we have some people? Show your hands. Who here has been in an actual fist fight? Okay, wow. We got a bunch of fighters here on East Side. All right. Audrey, did you raise your hand? Oh, man, I never thought it. Audrey Spencer, wow, don't mess with her. Okay, so here's the thing. We got some fighters here. That's like 50% of the people here. Okay, so, so if you've been in a fight, the, the first emotion you have, listen up, listen up. The first emotion is either am I going to fight or am I going to flight? Am I going to fight or am I going to run? According to the APA, that is anxiety. So now let's talk about the other one. Let's talk about an anxiety disorder. Because a lot of us maybe have struggled with anxiety before, and I don't want to miss this. According to the APA, an anxiety disorder is this. It is having recurring intrusive thoughts or concerns. It's to have recurring Thoughts, intrusive thoughts and concerns. It's, it's like that thought continues to be there even when the situation is done. Have you been there? You just wake up and you're like, I'm anxious and I have no idea why. I just took that test and I'm still anxious. So we think about our lives. We're not going to be in a lot of fights. We're not going to be in a lot of accidents. We're not going to be attacked by a lot of dogs. But we do have a lot of crazy friends. We do have a lot of tests that are coming. We have things right now that create anxiety in us. And if those things continue to fester and create anxiety, then it leads into sometimes and reveals sometimes an anxiety disorder. Now, now here's the reality. I am no psychiatrist. I'm not a counselor. I, I am not a doctor. But with the research I'm, I've found, there are seven major anxiety disorders if you have anxiety and anxiety disorder, you're going to fall into one of seven categories. And so I'm going to name these off real quick. One of the anxiety disorders is a general, generalized anxiety disorder. This is a chronic disorder involving excessive, long-lasting anxiety, and most of the time, the person doesn't know why. This is the most common one because it, it can't really be traced. It's just, I'm anxious, and I don't know why. I just have anxiety. But then there's other ones like a panic disorder. Panic is a sudden and intense attack that comes so quickly you can't even see it coming. I've noticed this about people who have panic attacks. You, you rarely can predict them. It's just like you're a little anxious and then it's like, bam, it's right then and there. And so someone could, could fall in the category they have a panic attack disorder. Then there's phobias. A phobia is an irrational fear and avoidance of an object or situation. We joke about this, you know, I'm afraid of spiders. You know, but there are people who actually freak out when they are around spiders and snakes and being in the dark. There are, there are actual anxiety disorders, phobias, because of this. Then there's social anxiety. A lot of you know what social anxiety is. That's a fear of being around people and fearing that, that you will be negatively judged by others in social situations. People get very anxious when they're in groups like this, even, even in this group. One of the things I hear from students and from parents is, is when they come in here, they feel sometimes anxious, you know, because it's loud, because there's a lot of people because there's games, because Justin's beard. There's a lot of things that lead to anxiety. And sometimes this is a situation where it could create anxiety in someone's life. And then the fifth one is obsessive compulsive disorder. Obsessive compulsive disorder. This is called OCD. Who here has ever called someone OCD? Have you ever heard that before? 
who here probably is OCD. I got to have it clean this way. Uh, I've seen people with their dishwasher. No, this dish has to go right there. You know what I mean? Like th there are certain things that have to be a certain way. And if those things aren't that certain way, they go crazy. How many people here are OCD people? Do we have some of those? With their shoes. Who here has OCD about their shoes? I knew it. Okay, we're not supposed to point out. Okay, so here's the thing. Then there is post-traumatic stress. Maybe you've heard of PTSD. Have you ever heard of people having flashbacks? People in the war, right? They have a, a traumatic experience in their life, and based on that traumatic experience, listen up, guys. Based on that traumatic experience, it, it, it gives someone like a flashback. Like they can actually, and this is weird to think about this. I was studying this one. You actually your brain almost transports, transports you back to that situation. It's like even though you're not there, you, your brain reacts like you're actually living that again. And so post-traumatic stress is something that a lot of people struggle with. It's, it's not just war. It could be numerous things. It, it could be a car accident. It could be a, a grandpa or, or something else, someone who's passed on. And, and once we experience that, it could create anxiety and anxiety disorder. And the last one is separation anxiety disorder. When we feel separated from someone, they're almost like a safety blanket for us. And I think about my son Milo. He is obsessed with mama, okay? Like if, if mama's not around, like Milo notices. He's at this stage where sometimes if she's not there, he's going to go crazy. It's because he has separation anxiety disorder. Some of us have that with our friends, it's like, oh, I, I can't, girls, you have this probably, I, I can't go to the bathroom alone. I need to take like an entire community with me, like, right? Like, like we, have, we have this thing where we feel like we have to have someone with us, someone on our shoulder. And so to step out into a situation that's different, sometimes we can, we can struggle with that. So, so the reality is that, that if we have an anxiety disorder, we will fall under one of those seven categories. Maybe we have some of those. So anxiety, quick review, anxiety in itself is not bad, but if it's excessive, it can lead into an anxiety disorder, which leads us to how do we as Christians focus on this? You know, Teacher Winston just talked very briefly about these things, but how do we as Christians focus on this? Because I've seen the extremes. I've seen, I've seen people say, well, Christians need to stop saying, just pray about it and it'll get better. I've heard people say, you can't just pray about it and get better. And then I've heard the other side where it says, just, just pray and have medication. You know what I mean? And some says, you know, medication is, is solely the key. Well, how do we as Christians focus if we have anxiety or even an anxiety disorder? We're going to be talking about that. How do we deal with this as Christians? Well, first off, if we have an anxiety disorder... And if we're on this side where we're saying, you know, you can't just pray about it. I believe we need God, and sometimes we do need medication. I believe God, one of the most amazing things he's did, has done, is to give us the ability to discover and find new medications. I believe he's made us explorers of this. I take allergy medication. Thank you, Lord, that someone researched and found that we can actually help our uh, allergies in the, what is it, the Ohio Valley, right? That we can actually take this and it helps us. Thank the Lord that we have people that when we're sick, we can take medication that helps us. It is a God-given thing. So I believe it's good that sometimes we have medication and we have God. We need both. And so whether you fall in the category where you have general anxiety or you have an anxiety disorder, I'm going to teach you a couple things in the Word of God that will help us. Okay? You guys ready to dig in? All right, we're going to dig in the Word of God. Here it is. In 2 Kings 9, chapter 1, it says this. It's the story of Ahab and Jezebel and this great prophet Elijah. This is what it says. 2 Kings chapter 9, verse 1. When Elijah got home... He told Jezebel everything Elijah had done, including the way he had killed all the prophets of Baal. So Jezebel sent this message to Elijah. May the gods strike me and even kill me if by this time tomorrow I have not killed you, just as you killed them. 
Then Elijah was afraid, and he fled for his life. He went to Bathsheba, to Beersheba, a town in Judah, and he left his servant there. Okay, so here we go. Quick background. We got this prophet, and now we got the king and the queen trying to kill him. They literally hate him. And he was in the situation just a chapter earlier where there's all these worshipers of Baal. Baal is this false god. So, so let's just say this. They are Satan worshipers, right? They're pretty intense. You guys didn't know you were going to see and hear about this this morning, did you? So you have all these prophets of Satan. And here's this one guy, Elijah, this one prophet of God, and he challenges them. He doesn't just challenge them. He shows them up. And by the end of the story, 350 prophets of Baal are dead. So he doesn't just show them up. He also ends their life. So this guy is a boss, right? This guy is a mighty prophet of God. Some people say he's one of the greatest prophets that ever lived. And so here's Elijah, and Elijah does all these mighty things, and then it goes back to the queen and to the king. And when Ahab tells the queen of these things, the queen's like, I'm going to kill him. Like, he killed our people, you know, these prophets, I'm going to kill him. And his response is interesting. Because here's this great prophet who just did this mighty work. This guy was so great, he actually prayed that it wouldn't rain for three years, and it didn't. So for three years, there was a drought because Elijah was just like, yeah, how about it, it doesn't rain anymore? And then when he decided that it was time to rain, he prayed, and it rained. So all these things are happening. All these amazing things are happening to this prophet, and then this queen gets upset, says, I want to kill him, and he flees 100 miles to this small town. And what we see in the scripture is interesting because Elijah, he wanted to die. It's so intriguing to me. This guy was so anxious, he, he decided life isn't worth living. And so when I started studying scripture and studying these mighty men and women of God, what I noticed was Elijah wasn't alone. Actually, there were numerous people in the Bible. The Bible's littered with people that struggle with anxiety. I think about Moses. Moses got the Ten Commandments. He struggled with anxiety. Moses actually, uh, when he went up to Mount Sinai and he got these Ten Commandments from God, when he saw that the people were sinning, he was just like, I just want to be done. If you just want to take me, I'm good to go. Then there's Jonah. There's a story of Jonah. He would rather die, as we see in Scripture, than, than share truth with the city of Nineveh. God said, I want you to go share with the city of Nineveh, this huge city of Assyria. I want you to go. I want you to tell them that I forgive them. All they have to do is repent. What happened? He said, I would rather die than go to the Ninevites. I don't want to do that. And, and so he tried to flee. And so in this story, we see that this great prophet Elijah was so anxious because of this threat of the queen that he said, God, just, just take me. Here's what it says in verse 4. Then he went on alone into the wilderness, traveling all day. He sat down under a solitary broom tree and prayed that he might die. I've had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life for I'm no better than my ancestors who have already died. Guys, this, is, this intrigues me. This intrigues me because I believe, I believe with my whole heart that anxiety affects every single person. I believe that, that Satan so often uses it to say, we don't have faith, or there's something wrong with us. Or we're not, we're not good enough. But, the, but what we see here is, is Elijah struggled with anxiety because he was human. He struggled because he was a human being. And even though God used him in mighty ways, he still went into a time of anxiety just moments after he performed this great miracle. So anxiety can be normal. But here it is. This is what I want you guys to take away. When anxiety attacks, 
it doesn't mean that we are faithless. It means our faith is being attacked. Because the root of anxiety, the actual root of it, the source, is disbelief in God. That's where it comes from. We are more anxious when we, when we struggle to believe in the promises of God. But just because we're anxious, it doesn't mean we are faithless. It just means the faith we have is actually being attacked. Have you guys noticed that before? The times when you were closest with God were the times where you were less anxious. That's usually what happens. But then when you, when you start to stray away, when you start to take steps slowly away, something starts to change. Those anxieties, those old struggles, they start to come back. But that doesn't mean we don't have a relationship with God. It just means what we have been fighting against is being attacked. So we have to remember that statement. And then it leads us into, we got to believe the promises. So the source is disbelief. How do we attack it? We got to start believing the words of God. When, when we read this thing, when we read our Bible, we have to start believing that this is actually true. That the things that, that God is trying to tell us in here aren't just things that are good fortune cookie things, right? The, these, are, these are actual statements that are promises written to you and myself. And one of those promises we see in John chapter 14, it says, Jesus is telling the people, he says, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives, do I give to you. So let your heart, hearts be, not be troubled, neither let them be afraid. What this is saying is, I want to actually give you my peace. And so my question with us is, are we at peace? Where are we today? Do we, do we stand more on the side of anxiety? Or do we stand on the side of peace? Because Jesus says, I actually want to give you my peace. Here it is. I, I leave it to you. You know, I think about... You know, when my grandpa passed away, he, he handed stuff down to us. You know, we had a couple things that he handed to us. And, and my grandpa wasn't a person who I would say had a close relationship with God. But I remember uh, I found this old, like, bronze cross. And so I took that cross, and right when I gave my life to Christ, I had that cross really close to me. And it was just to help me remember what God had done for me. And so it's the same with this image of Jesus. He says, peace I leave with you. As my grandpa left that to me, he said, I'm leaving this to you. But the reality is a lot of us just flick it off. And we try to deal thing, with things ourselves. We try to deal with things on our own power. We try to pretend like we don't have issues with anxiety. We try to pretend that we don't have times where we have phobias, where we have times where we have social anxiety, where we have times where we're just anxious and we don't know why. We try to flick these things away and say, this is, this is something that, that I can figure out. Well, when we see in the Word of God, He says, I didn't come to give you anxiety. I came to give you peace. I came to give you joy. I actually came so you could start being satisfied with life. That doesn't mean that we don't have seasons or situations where we're anxious, but it means it shouldn't be the overall tenure and posture of our life, an anxious posture. And so here it is. Believe the promises of Jesus and anxiety will evaporate in the warmth of God's care. We just got to start believing. What is it? We got tests. We got summer, we got finance, we got friends, we got relationship. What is it that causes anxiety in our life? Maybe it's our faith. Maybe we're anxious because we know that we are we're not seeking God in the way that, that we know we once did. Or maybe we're anxious because we just don't even believe. We don't believe anymore. Or we don't believe in the way we once did. I, I don't know what it is. But, but what we do see is we have to believe what Jesus says. 
that he came to actually give us this peace. And I challenge us here to speak it. Not just to believe it, but to speak it, to, to speak out the promises. I have peace because of Jesus. I have the peace of Jesus, which is far better than the world has to offer. It's almost like a motivational thing. You look in the mirror and you say, I have the peace of Jesus in my life. Because sometimes we got to confront even ourselves. We got to confront the thoughts that, that muster in our minds that shouldn't be there. And we got to confront it. And we got to confront it with the Word of God. It's like one of my favorite verses, Philippians 4. Do not be anxious for anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And listen up. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, will God guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Isn't that cool? One thing I noticed with scripture on anxiety is usually a, a, a word is pretty close, either before or after. And it's a word we've been talking about. It, it's peace. And that's what we want. That is the goal, to move from anxiety to peace. And so as we go into this final song, it, it's called Christ is Enough. Guys, I believe that sometimes we need to go and, and, and have uh, anxiety medication. I believe it, it's something that we can meet with counselors or youth pastors or youth leaders. I believe in those things. But regardless, wherever we stand on this, it has to, it has to start with Christ. It has to start with Christ being enough for us. Because once, once we lean into his promises, once we grow closer to his image, naturally that anxiety starts to, to fall away. But we got to believe it. And we got to speak it and we got to remember it. Let's pray. God, thank you that we could just dig into your word, the story of Elijah and how he was uh, fearful for his life. We know fear is the enemy of peace. And so, Father, I pray that as we uh, sing this song, as we leave, that we have taken one step closer to a life that is not anxious. God, no one's perfect here. We all have moments where we just are nervous and we don't know why. And so I pray that it starts with you. Wherever we are, we lean into you in a way we never have. Because we know when we draw near to you, life just tends to work out. We love you, God. We thank you. We pray this all in your name.